Is it just cleaning the blood or is it getting rid of um, family items as well? So the family's not involved? Okay. It's messy. How many rooms did it go over? Okay. But there's a lot of brain and bone matter. Okay, so what with a shotgun? Okay, and what's the relation to the person to you? All Gone Extreme Clean came about because a friend of mine committed suicide and his mother was told to clean it up and obviously we couldn't let her do that. So I continued my studies in forensic medicine and now that's where we are. We clean up crime scenes, squats, squalors, everything that you can think of, natural deaths, but we also do domestic and commercial cleaning as well, but we basically are crime scene cleaners. The first thing we do is open up all the windows. We need air. Yeah, they're all locked, don't they? Yeah. Sometimes we have time limits. The family wants the house back in six hours. We get six hours to strip a whole house. Someone's whole life we have to have gone in six hours. <coughs> Bowls? So the family's asked that we grab his no. personal mail. Oh, sweetheart. What a nice looking man. This man was 46 years old, suffered from schizophrenia and had AIDS as well. He had passed away probably six to eight weeks before he was found and I think the only reason he was found was a neighbour alerted someone. A lot of people assume that um, the cleaning is done by the police or done by the, by the ambulance or, or is done by somebody else. Um, very rarely people realise that that sort of cleaning falls back to the family. The family rang me up, as families normally do. After the police and the coroners are finished, they ring me up to clean up what is left. They don't know because they don't usually want to go in there. 30 years ago, this job would not have existed. Mm -hmm. Families cared about each other. Families looked after each other. There was no throwing family, you know, family members into hospital and leaving them alone. Now it is. But, fortunately or unfortunately, that's what I do and that's what they pay me to do. And I come in and try and make it easier. I don't know if I do. Some people just thank me and want to hug me and do everything and other people treat you like you're the black plague, that you've got two heads because you do this sort of work. Well. I'm very normal, I have a good husband, I have my bird, I have a good life, I have lots of family, so I haven't got two heads. I'm, you know, and I do go home sometimes and have a cry about it. Hi Pete. Hello. Coffee? Yes please. If she needs to talk to someone uh, and release um, you know, whether it's stress related, whether it's frustration, if she needs to release, um, I'm there for her. Um, so I, I do support her and if she needs to talk to someone, um, you know, she, she can rely on me. It breaks my heart every time Peter wants to come with me. I wanted him to be my virgin. I didn't want him to be in that. But he sees it now and he smells it now. And he understands. I, I only help Lee, um, you know, after working hours. 
um, whether it's later in the afternoon, um, in the evenings, or maybe on the weekends, I'll, I'll, I'll help her out. Um, there are times when she needs a man's touch, so, um, you know. Playing the music? Hey! <laughs> There we go. This is a massive big part of his lung. And that's part of his lung as well that he has coughed up. This is an agonising death. Mm. And he should have been in hospital or he should have had someone with him. Someone would have heard him. Don't tell me. If I have a coughing fit, you know, people know. He's died and he's coughed like that and brought that blood up. He hasn't died an easy death. This is actually his hair. <coughs> Breakdown of blood. More hair here. And then blood on the wall where, as he's passed away, and when the police have moved him, it's spurted. Within six minutes, the first fly will hit. Within an hour, the body will start to break down. When the body starts to decompose, all the organs inside start to swell with gases. You will see the skin just sliding off. You will see lividity, which is where, you know, if someone's sitting on their bum, if they're found within a certain amount of hours, you will see a big purple pool that's where all the blood's gone to because heart's not pumping anymore. The body does amazing things. We're amazing when we're alive, but we're even more amazing when we die. I've had a brain tumour. I've had a spinal tumour. I've had ovarian cancer. Um, My bowel is now... Either my bowel or my ovary, I don't know, is wrapped around each other, and they've tried to fix that. And they can't at the moment. Um, what else? Anemia. Um, done the disc in my back. I'm a prime example of you shouldn't be walking, but if you work into that, then you're going to believe it. And I don't believe that anything's going to stop me. The day you start to believe in the pity of yourself is a day that you might as well just dig your hole and lay down and go. Oh, I had an odour that was so horrific that when you hit the bottom of the stairs, you knew where you were going. The, the smell actually pulled you up the stairs and you have to come down after seeing what you've seen and then you have to go and put this face onto the family and not let them know that you've just seen the most horrific sight because it's it's very confronting to see a chair that someone has died in and the chair takes on their whole body form and you can see where their feet are on the carpet and you know so you have to be mad to be able to go holy shit I've just seen hell and then come down to the family and go yeah well we have to just do this and you know we have to get rid of this and so yeah you have to be mad I have you have to be mad there's no sanity in my job there are two definite things in life, um, death and taxes. I'm involved with taxes and she's involved with death, which is... Makes me sound like I'm a mass murderer. Any mass if... murderers out there, just give me your phone number so I can clean you up. OK, well, there's proof. But it's on film now. If I do go missing... Uh, you... <laughs> yes. I clean up after the body's gone. I don't clean up the body and get rid of it. But you know how to get rid of a body. Even with all my knowledge, I couldn't do a perfect murder. There is no perfect murder. DNA, you leave a trail wherever you go. You don't know who your partner is. Your partner could be a psycho. But I'm in love with a psycho anyway, so... (laughs) So, um... Where are you sleeping tonight? Out and about, anyway, I guess. (laughs) It'll be safe there. (laughs) 
Isn't that nice? I'm a psychic. <laughs> I had one family that rang me how often? It was to the point where I, I had done my back in and I was in bed and they rang me and asked me to come because they were too scared to open the door. And they stood there and fought with me for 15 minutes and I said, I'm not opening it, I'm sorry. You have to open it. And I just grabbed the two girls and I dragged them in, threw them in and shut the door on them. I said, deal with it. My job is to clean and make that area safe again for them. And for me, safe is not getting rid of the biohazard, not getting rid of the blood, not getting rid of anything that they're going to see. Safe for me is for them to walk in and go, yeah, I know my brother lived here, but it's okay now. I can walk away and I, I take every job with me and it worries me every time. But they have to live with the fact that they didn't spend time with their family and look after them. They have to deal with it. Um, you don't want it. Um, now, there's a photo of a little boy and a little girl. I did find the mobile, but it's not um, charged up. Yep. Okay. We have to throw out this person's whole life. We have to ring a skip. We have to throw out their couches. We have to throw out their clothes. And, you know, I, I, I enjoy looking at what they've done in their life. That's not him. I'd say that's his boyfriend. I've got a really close friend who his brother-in-law committed suicide um, in his car. Um, the daughter and his ex-partner um, found them. Then six months later, Sharon hung herself and the daughter found her as well. So she's lost two parents in six months. That little girl is 13 years old, lost two parents, and Sharon thought that she had done the right thing by leaving a book on how to date boys, how to do this, how to do that, um, you know, how to have your periods, how to go on the pill. And she'd written a whole book for her daughter, a suicide manual. She left her 13-year-old daughter. And she hung herself and let her daughter find that. And then the police found this book. And, told, and it told the daughter everything. How to go and get your first credit card, how to do this. This girl had been thinking about this. And this girl rang me a week before she died and begged me to speak to her. And I didn't. So that was one that I did not clean up, but that was one that played on me so badly because I had ignored her. And I had wished her dead because of the way she was treating her daughter. I've seen people die. And you know what? I wish someone had have been the same way with me. When my brother died, I was left to myself. I was left for three days in the T-shirt that he died in. He died in my arms and I was left there with the T-shirt on because no one told me to take the T-shirt off. So you have to make people safe. You have to make them feel that everything is still okay. I had ovarian cancer when I was 21 and I was told that I would never have a child. And when I was 40... I went to the doctors and I said to them what's wrong with me and they said oh you've had chemotherapy it's early menopause and I went okay and I found out I was pregnant and we went and had tests and we were told that the baby had died 
and they had to cut the baby out of me. Sexy Bubba Joe. Mm. Sexy Bubba Joe, come on. A lady gave birth in a car and the baby didn't wait. Like, there was no waiting. This baby was popping out. So there was blood everywhere. I, I enjoyed that. I didn't charge them. I couldn't charge them for it. I got to do something coming into the world that was alive instead of cleaning up death. Who am I to say whether it's junk? I mean, it, it's not expensive, but it's something that belonged to their brother. I mean... I have to be the last person that touches anything that that dead person touched. And I have to choose whether I tell the family they can have this or they can have that, or I just have to go, no, nah, I'm skipping it all. You're touching. every minute of someone's life. Everyone has to take five minutes out of what they think is so important in their life, kick themselves up the arse and go, let's just care about each other more. People don't, people forget that. And I think if someone came out and did some time in a kid's hospital, they'd forget that their little aches and pains are important. They'd forget that, oh shit, I've got to get a bigger house than everybody else. They'd forget, you know, I need the best jewellery. It would be forgotten. Come out to a crime scene. See the devastation, not only of the person who lived in absolute squalor or lived in a mansion and just got himself in so much shit that he had to blow his brains out, and just realise life is just so important. I think if I've made it easier for a family, it doesn't matter what I've seen. I've stopped them seeing it, and that's all that matters. It's not my family's blood, it's their family's blood. They don't need to see it. I've stopped that. They've walked away, they don't need to see it. And they come back and it's clean and they don't have to know. And that makes me feel better.